Hello everyone, this is the Fans Politics Asia and this is the summary for the day of 491 for the 29th of June. Let's start off with the Southern Front. Uh, at the Southern Front, uh, the, the, the landing uh, is no longer happening. Uh, the Ukrainian forces after they, was, uh, they got rejected uh, away from the shorelines the, uh, we do not have any reports of the landing anymore uh, the amphibious assault over at this area here over at Dachi the Ukrainian forces continue to hold the positions at Dachi and the Russian forces made some uh, very uh, risky attempt at trying to eject the Ukrainian forces and uh, they suffered heavy losses information coming from uh, Raiba the pro-Russian source uh, saying that the the attempt to clear the the duchy area with infantry and equipments have failed there is dead and wounded and loss of the uh, equipments on the russian side and uh, so the this pro-russian source are uh, criticized uh, the plan by the russian commanders to uh, attack the ukraine forces in open areas uh, because uh, because there is no reason to do this as the ukrainians do not pose a threat to be able to advance uh, further from this area that the ukrainians have the bridge hit so the yeah so they they criticize the commanders involved in this uh meaningless attempt to try to eject the ukrainian forces over at the zaporizhia front at the zaporizhia front there is no fighting over at piatikaki anymore so uh the the, the village is no longer slutty and uh, over at orikiv now uh, there is fighting reported north of robit uh, robotine uh and what the Russians call near Novo Danilivka, and also at the region near Malatomashka, which is just which is north of the the lines between Robotine and Vrbove, Vrbove. and uh, so uh, at Novo Danilivka, the Ukrainians uh, launched another attack. Uh, the what's noteworthy is the pro pro Russian sources reported that. The assault group of the 65th uh, mechanized brigade attacked without armored vehicles so i think they they're trying to sneak in uh maybe the attack was trying to you know attack quietly because you know armored vehicles is very uh glaring uh, you, you can actually see them coming from a distance away and uh the the attack has still managed to be spotted by the russian forces so as a result uh the russians actually fired at uh, the ukrainian forces and uh, so far, the, the Raiba reported that the front line still is one and a half kilometers away from the outskirts of Robotini, which is pretty much close to where our mapping is. Uh, this is pro this basically uh, the mapping is more or less actually correct. And uh, over at the south of Malatomashka, there is also fighting reported here by the Russian Defense Ministry. Uh, the Ukraine, uh, the Russian forces actually defended with uh, air force. Uh, with air support uh, there is a heavy entrenchment around here so the ukrainian forces are uh, still are uh, unable to break through uh, this this line just yet so that's all from the orekiv sector over at the velika nova Silka sector raiba reported that the russian forces redraw from the south of novo derivka and uh, rifnopil the russian forces previously have uh, some positions like this and as i mentioned it is not possible for the russian forces to hold these positions with the fall of rifnopil uh, to the ukrainians so the russian forces actually fall back to be behind the river which is as i expected and uh, form the new line of defense along the river however the russian defense ministry interestingly say that uh, there is fighting between makarivka and rifnopil they say that uh, they met the forward ground elements are met are able to repel Ukrainian uh, attacks up to two platoons of manpower between Makarovka and Rafnopil. So uh, this, so which means that there is some uh, Russian uh, forces that, uh, despite uh, there is a withdrawal over to this line, uh, penetrate upwards and uh, manage to engage with Ukrainian forces, uh, kind of be behind enemy lines. The the Ukrainian forces also tried to attack uh, near Starobayovsky. There's a kind of a advance that it was a uh, brewing around this region here and then they were hit by russian artillery causing the entire attack to be abandoned so that's why it's not uh, written or mapped as fighting but actually as a attempted assault uh, this is reported by the russian defense ministry 
there um so the but overall it is still a very positive uh, development for the ukrainians as they managed to push the russians entirely out uh, of the north of this river with the uh, russian forces actually you know redrawing to a new line of defense uh, which also helps because it uh, helps in their defending because it basically straightens the line uh, along Stadio Mayoske to the north of Prione. Uh, there is no uh, clear reported fighting uh, around the Levatne Prione region, possibly as a, uh, due to the redrawal of the Russian forces at this area here. So, yeah, there is no uh, attacks reported at Prione. Uh, that's all from the Velikan Nova Circle sector. Uh, we go into the Donetsk front, which is over here. This is uh, this is the Donetsk front. Um, it used to be much bigger. Uh, Donetsk front used to be much bigger. You know, used to be you know like this. But because we tr we break it up uh, with ADF front and a uh, Bakhmut front, so uh, Bakhmut, uh, Donetsk front only left with this area here. Uh, over the Donetsk front, we have continued Russian offensive uh, being reported over at the Marinka. Uh, a village of Marinka over here at Boyeda, uh, Bojeda, as well as the area around Novo Mihailivka. The Russian forces continue to push in this area here. Information is coming from uh, the Ukrainian Defense Ministry as they said that uh, the Ukrainian defenders uh, repelled Russian attacks at Marinka, Bojeda, and Novo Mihailivka. Uh, the information is the same around here. So it's the same information. Yeah, so this all this information coming from the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Uh, the Russian side did not mention anything about that any attack around this region. Moving into Adyevka front. At the Adyevka front, uh, this is Adyevka, uh, the the fortress city of Adyevka, uh, where the Ukrainians have a very strong defense around this area, just off the the capital of the Donetsk People's Republic. There is fighting reported near Tonenke. This is reported by the Russian Defense Ministry, which is a little unusual because Tonenke is kind of behind Germany, and we do know that the Ukrainians have uh, managed to push the line southern south a bit. So there is fighting reported at near Tonenke is kind of unusual. So they say that uh that they managed to defend uh, at least two attacks around this area here, according to the Yoke Group of Forces. So not exactly sure what to make of this uh because this is a kind of weird reporting i would say that they, sh they should have reported near vodian so anyway uh then uh we have deep state ua the pro-ukrainian source reported that the russians are attacking across the entire line from kruta balka all the way to krasno horivka they say that the russians are attacking uh, across the entire line in this area here this um which is kind of uh, weird because the Raiba reported that the Ukrainians are still attacking at Versailles, uh, which is Versailles is here. So uh, this information is coming from Raiba. Uh, as you can see that the Ukrainians are still con conducting series of attacks on Russian position near the village of Versailles. So the Russians are still holding the line uh, around the town here. Uh, as, as the Ukrainians have already captured most of this area here and they are continue to attack in this area. So, yeah, it's kind of a contradiction because of Deep State USA that the Russians are on the offensive all the way from Krasnohorivka region. So, yeah, not sure how to uh, how to map this uh, accurately. So, yeah, parallel universe. So, Deep State UA, so this is, this is the information. Uh, they say that the Russians continue to attack Krasnohorivka to Kruta Balka line. So, anyway, moving on. To, uh, at the New York front, we have no information at the New York front. Moving into the Bakhmut front. At the Bakhmut front, the, uh, the Ukrainian uh, Bakhmut offensive continues uh, with the, the latest news that the Ukrainian forces have captured uh, and, uh, and have some kind of bridge hit over at the dam area along the canal. Uh, which means that the fighting has arrived at Kudyumivka itself. Uh, this is reported by Raiba. And uh, fighting is reported along the canal according to Deep State UA. Uh, they they reported, that, reported that the Ukrainian forces have partial success near the canal. So it's kind of uh, unusual. Uh, not exactly sure where they are referring to. It looks like this area here, uh, given that they drew a Russian uh, arrow backwards, which is very unusual because usually the arrow signifies russian uh, attacks 
and, but and then uh, on the deep state US mapping they do not indicate Ukrainian attacks but in this area they have a Russian attack going the opposite direction so uh, that's kind of interesting uh, the first time I actually uh, noticed that uh, there is fighting reported at Klishievka according to the uh, pro-Russian source Raiba and uh, in in the northern front uh, in the northern uh, flanks there is also fighting reported uh, at Berkivka, uh, according to Raiba, with the Ukrainian forces continue to push for this town over here. Uh, at Bakhmut itself, the, the, the Ukrainian Defense Ministry reported that the Russians conducted uh, offensive operation in the Bakhmut area. I'm not too sure what it means by Bakhmut area, because Bakhmut is actually quite a city. So, um, yeah, I not so I just indicate it uh, as here, uh, but I don't think that the Russians are actually conducting offensive. Uh, over at the Orekhovo Vasilivka region, uh, the Ukrainian forces um, are attacking in this area here. Uh, they reportedly managed to capture some area here, which we already have mapped as under Ukrainian control. So I'm not exactly sure where it is, and uh, that's it from the Bakhmut front. And moving into the Sivas front, at the Siv this is Sivas. Uh, at the Sivas front, uh, we, the, at the southern part of the Sivas front, there is fighting reported at Rozdolivka, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, with the Russian forces supposedly attacking Rozdolivka. However, the Myroshinikov, the pro Ukrainian source, reported in the direction of Yakolivka, uh, they met, uh, the Ukrainian forces have tactical success, which means that the, there's a Ukrainian attack towards Yakolivka. So, Maybe it's a trait of uh, offensive, or it could be the Ukrainian forces, uh, the Ukrainian Defense Ministry are projecting their own offensive, which actually that it is actually part of the a full frontal attack uh, on the Russian positions along this line. Um, over at Bilohorivka, there is fighting reported over here. According to the Russian Defense Ministry, they said that the Ukrainian forces were on the offensive over at Bilohorivka. However, uh, the Ukrainian Defense Ministry say that the Russians are the one actually attacking in this area here. So, yeah, parallel universe again. Uh, so let's see how this goes. And uh, that's all from the Sivas front. And we'll move into the Crimea front. At the Crimea front, uh, fighting mainly is within the Serebransky forestry region. So this entire region here is a, a commercial forest uh, where they actually plant and chop timber if i'm not mistaken that's why you can see all these holes in this uh, pre-war um, satellite imaging uh fighting is uh the fighting mainly here is the russians are mainly on the offensive deep state ua and uh, raiba both pro-ukrainian and pro-russian sources are reporting that the russians are actually uh on the offensive uh the, i think the offensive uh force is actually uh the airborne forces the vdv and uh, however the ukrainians do did try to you know do some probings against uh, Kuzmine direction or uh, this Kuzmine uh, however uh, did not work out so the the Russian uh, offensive over within the Serebransky forestry uh, resumes or continues rather and um, the Ukrainians uh, did not uh, relaunch their offensive uh, that had uh, launched from yep, uh, Yampolivka, Toske, Nevsky you know towards Yevonopopivka this offensive did not uh, was was not relaunched so it looks like the the situation here is maybe a bit difficult for the ukrainians uh given the air superiority and artillery superiority uh over at this area here and i'm uh, moving on to the north uh, of this area uh as Fetovy and kopian's front there is actually zero information uh the only information coming out from this area is just uh artillery shellings which uh, i no longer want to report as it doesn't really uh seems to indicate anything uh over you know when we look at a macro scale uh it doesn't seem to reflect like we have reported a lot of the shellings by the russian side uh where they are specifically talk about shellings against uh manpowers or concentration of ukrainian forces at the front lines but it doesn't lead to a russian offensive so in the end the reporting of uh, artillery shelling doesn't really uh, give us any analysis value so there is no an, an analytical value in terms of that so i do not do no longer want to waste time on it so that we can shorten the uh, mapping time uh, and then i can actually concentrate more on the geopolitics uh, and news reporting so anyway uh, there's nothing at the khaki front and nothing along the border and that's it 
so this is the summary for the day of uh, 491 for the 29th of june and uh do press the subscribe button if every one of you that is not subscribed press the subscribe button this channel will grow by 10,000 subs at least so do help to press the subscribe button do support the channel um because all this mapping is actually a uh, very time consuming so if you can support the work uh, that would be especially awesome thank you for watching and uh, i'll see you in the next update